Now, let's talk about Wuhan and the lady who has got breaking news after breaking news after breaking news. Uh, no matter what pressure comes her way, and you can imagine how much of it there would be, she keeps powering on, and that's why we love her. Compulsory, 6 p.m. Sunday night here on Sky News because that's where she breaks the stories, as well as in the Australian so often each and every day. And Matt Canavan is, of course, the national senator who uh, asked some questions of the CSIRO uh, in and around uh, potential uh, game of function, Wuhan and all the rest of it. We'll get to that in a second. Sherry, first with you. So, last night, let's show this here, which is um, the video of, uh, of uh, the... Um, well, tell us about that World Exclusive last night and then I'll get to the grab. Apologies. So the World Health Organization and its investigators have maintained that there were no bats housed in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. This is, of course, uh, the major laboratory in Wuhan that's, you know, the, the world premier uh, facility for bat coronaviruses in the same city where the virus COVID-19 started. World Health Organization uh, investigators like Peter Daszak said it was a conspiracy theory to suggest that there were bats at this laboratory. He said, we don't capture bats, we, we, we sample them and then release them. This was in a series of tweets in December 2020. The World Health Organization, when it went into Wuhan early this year, did not ask the scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology whether they kept bats in their facility at all. And their report only mentioned that there was an animal center for primates. Now, Paul, this is a crucial question because it goes to the potential origin of the virus. You know, there's been a lot of discussion about how a virus that originates in bats could have traveled all the way from the southwestern province of China, where uh, the, the virus with the closest genetic sequence identity to SARS-CoV-2 was found in a bat in, in, in caves in the Yunnan province, how that could have got all the way to, U, to Wuhan uh, if it was a natural virus without leaving any outbreaks along the way. So if there were bats and bats from this region uh, and, and the bats haven't been identified yet in the laboratory, it is relevant. Last night, we got the vision that proves it. Well, and also part of that too is that one of the people who was working in and around that thing is called, uh, well, colloquially known as the Bat Lady. Here's part of what you showed last night. Shi Zheng Li Yenjiu Tuan Dui, Shi Nian Ru Yi Zhi. 在我国及非洲多地采集一万五千余份蝙蝠样品，追踪SARS病毒源头，并分离出多种新型病毒。so, what was the value of the bat lady in the Wuhan Institute of Virology? The key point in the vision we found last night was that there were bats in cages at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. There's another. Uh, th this was footage from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, it was produced in May 2017 when the facility had just finished when it was ready to, to launch. There's also uh, footage of a scientist feeding a bat with a worm. So there were definitely bats in the facility. Uh, you know, th this goes to the heart of how the pandemic may have started. Was it a natural virus that somehow a worker who was dealing with these bats became infected? Or was it a virus you know, uh, that came from a bat that was then subject to dangerous gain-of-function research, gain-of-function experiments at the laboratory. Those experiments, were those experiments were happening and many of them were being funded by the NIH, uh, you know, under the direction of Anthony Fauci, who secretly had lifted the ban of, on gain-of-function research in the US as well. But even when the ban was in place, the money was flowing through a subgrant to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Now, stay there because I want to ask you one more question. But Matt Canavan, um, the Bat Lady and the CSIRO, what piqued your interest here? Well, uh, Paul, in, in some respects, I, I'm just basking in the glow of the uh, amazing work that Shari has been doing. I, I took up some of the issues she's uncovered in the Senate. If only Shari could be there as a senator and ask them, it probably would have been much more <laughs> effective. But um, I, uh, I asked them about the work that... Uh, they'd done with the Wuhan Institute. And, and uh, quite honestly, uh, Paul, the CSIRO's answers were not fulsome uh, at the time. Uh, they tried to say that, oh, the only work we've done with Wuhan was uh, around the, the Handra virus, or they suggested that was the only work they'd done. Uh, when, in fact, uh, there's a paper uh, I've had sent to me from 2010 where CSIRO researchers are working with uh, the Bat Lady and uh, and Wuhan Institute scientists to look at coronaviruses from bats, bats they'd captured and be, were working on in Geelong in Australia, 
and they were testing to see which coronavirus types would most likely infect humans. Now, so, I'll stress it wasn't gain-of-function research as such, but it, it is a major collaboration between the CSIRO and the Wuhan Institute, and we need answers here. We need to get to the bottom of what happened here because I think Shari has uncovered the greatest scientific scandal of all time. Millions of people have died, and they deserve, their families deserve, answers about how this happened and how can we make sure this does not happen again. Well, here's part of that questioning that took place in the Senate. What was the research? What exactly was the research done in Geelong with the, uh, the Chinese scientists? I think this is the Xi Jing Li, who is otherwise known as Bat Lady in some reports. Um, what research was conducted in Geelong by the CSIRO? At which stage we noted that we don't undertake uh, research on live bats at ACDP. Um, and that, uh, uh, so it, we made that statement clear in relation, relation to it. We noted that we did rely on research from overseas in relation to bats to undertake zoonotic uh, research as well in that regard. Um, so happy to provide a copy of that statement to you. So what's open-ended uh, for you about that, Matt? What's the obvious question that you still have? Now, again, we're not talking about Australia having a direct connection to the Wuhan lab. We, come on, we're not, we're not into that. But, but what, we're, what is the key detail you think the CSIRO needs to serve up? Well, well, again, Paul, the answer there is quite shifty because the CSIRO said they did not do research on live bats at Geelong. And then they mentioned, oh, well, we rely on bat research that's done overseas indicating that they don't do any research almost on bats in Australia, when in fact, again, there's a paper that CSIRO scientists in, in uh, conjunction with scientists from the Wuhan Institute, a separate paper from what I was talking about before, which, uh, which included their, their, them capturing bats, I think in Queensland from memory, but capturing bats in Australia, transporting them alive to this Geelong facility, this CSIRO facility, and yes, they euthanised them there, but they weren't really forthcoming with the Senate there about exactly what uh, they've been up to. And, and this is what where these questions arise here about what has the scientific community across the world, not just in China, been up to here and what have they been hiding from us? Uh, because And they've been using the same tactics we see from the climate scientists, calling anyone like Shari who's calling them to question them, calling them conspiracy theorists, they're crazy, uh, when actually now that we've uncovered a lot of this stuff... There's a real issue here that scientists, unfortunately, were actively involved in trying to hide over the past year. Good on you, mate, and good on you for standing up in that situation in Biloela as well. Shari, uh, what's your take on what Matt's just uh, said in the questioning that he uh, had for the CSIRO? Well, the CSIRO misled Parliament, misled the Senate and misled Matt Carnivan. I had to correct the record on it. Uh, they provided correspondence um, to Matt Canavan and to all the senators on that committee, admitting that actually they had done research on live bats as their scientific papers state, as, as Matt just referred to. The live, live bats were flown from Queensland to Victoria for dissection for research with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. We're bringing this report in the Australian in the coming days because they have had to formally correct the record on this. They, they, their evidence was misleading. There is an extensive history between the Wuhan Institute of uh, Virology and CSIRO and Australian government funding. Wow. Uh, this, this is dating back over a decade. Xi Zengli, in fact, <laughs> came and worked for several months at the CSIRO at the Geelong Institute, the Australian Animal Health Laboratory. The uh, her number Yes, yes. We I mean this was one of this was my very early report That's right. in April last year. It was front page of the Daily Telegraph and Media Watch attacked me over it. Her number two Peng Zhu uh, we trained, Australian taxpayer funding trained Peng Zhu. Um, we, we have a long history. There are many research projects that have been done in conjunction with um, the CSIRO and the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Some of them we're, <laughs> we haven't yet published yet. Matt and I have been working on this together. And there is a story coming up in The Australian just on how extensive this research collaboration is. But, but you know, we, we've been reporting on this for over a year now. Um, the, the question here is, why is gain-of-function research that was banned under the Obama administration and only lifted by Anthony Fauci with no permission from anyone in the Trump administration, why is that still legal in Australia? This is something that took mm. me over a month 
you know, while I was writing my book. This took me over a month to get a proper answer from Greg Hunt from the health minister's office. I got, I got sent the run, run around. Eventually, they released a statement that's, that admitted gain of function research is allowed in Australia. You know, th this is research that many scientists internationally, they formed a group called the Cambridge Working Group. They have objected to this research. They say there is of no benefit. It has never been shown to cause a pandemic. But on the other hand, it can create these dangerous new viruses that never existed in nature before. And if there is a laboratory leak, and we know lab leaks are extremely common, you know, even in the in, even in the top world class facilities, accidents happen. You know, people aren't robots; hmm. mistakes happen, and and so that actually the greater risk is of causing a pandemic. You guys are amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Um... Keep reading her stuff. Keep watching her. Keep paying attention Thank to you, Matt Paul. in the Thanks parliament. Thanks Thank for you your guys. support as well. Thank Mate, you. All day, every day. It's nice and nice. Thanks, Paul. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you so much. Uh, well, what a scooper she is. Uh, Sherry Markson, CSIRO now. My goodness.